Welcome. In this video, we're going to do an unboxing and go over how to play Shadowrun Encounters. So this is a small game that came out a couple years ago, but I uh, got the chance to play once and really enjoyed it. It's based in the Shadowrun world, published by Catalyst Games, and it's a push-your-luck dice game. So it's for one to eight players. Takes about 15 to 30 minutes and ages 13 and up. There's not much in this, 124 cards, some city card screens, some punch out counters, and eight dice and a rule book. Take a quick peek inside. So you've got a guide to the sixth world, which will introduce you to the world of Shadow Run and what's going on. Setup guide and rule book. Bunch of counters. That'll be our money for the game. Our display cards. And then a bunch of card chores to use and dice. The goal of Encounter Shadow Run is to be the first person to get 30 money or New Yen in the Shadow Run universe. In order to get Nuyen, you're going to do encounters. Basically, you're going to flip those over. You're going to get a name, a total amount to succeed, extra money you'll get, some flavor text, keywords, and additional abilities. So for this one, we need to roll our dice and get a total of five. It would get us an additional two money. Must be defeated twice with the same roll of the dice. So for something like that, we take our six dice and move those into play there. We can see we've got a five and a five, or we could use a five and a two and a three to beat this two different times. We'd place that on top of there. And if we wanted to push our luck, we'd continue pulling over encounters and re-rolling dice to see if we can meet the requirements. And of course, on this roll, I would have failed by not getting the three. So to help or hinder the process, you also have the opportunity to purchase runners to help you. Basically, they're going to give you ways to modify the dice rolls to help you succeed on encounter rolls. Different districts will be in play that will add additional rolls to the game. We've got several of these and they will change throughout the game depending on certain cards that are flipped over. And in the multiplayer game, or you also have corporations that will have special abilities that you can use at a certain cost to try to hinder your opponent's progress as they go through. So you can see there's a large selection of mega corporations to choose from. and a large selection of runners that you could possibly get to take on your team. Basically, you're in a futuristic world, fantasy world with dwarves, elves, and such, trying to steal information from the mega companies. So a lot of different characters that can help you with different special abilities. So like for this one, all ones rolled or wild, all twos rolled or wild. All rolled ones are wild magic and may re-roll one and like die, so a whole lot of special abilities. The same thing with the encounters. Some are gonna be fairly simple to get through. Some are gonna have special abilities, so this symbol would make us change our districts at the end of the round. And so forth. And most of these are gonna range anywhere from one to Maybe there was an 11, assume they might go up to 12. So all in all, just a basic push your luck dice game with the Shadow Run theme involved. Just a couple minor changes for a solo play. In solo play, you will not use any of the mega corporations and you are trying just to get to 20 money within 12 rounds. So let's go ahead and get into a solo game. So to start off, we'll just shuffle each of our decks. 
counters for the Shadow Runners. We'll go ahead and shuffle these and take one off the top that we'll start with as long as it costs no more than two. So we will start the game with blue screen. We can use him for all rolled ones or wild. And after you use the Shadow Runner, they will go away unless you pay three money to keep them in place. So they're all just one time use unless a symbol or text says otherwise. And for our districts, we will be starting with the Orc Underground. So once per run, an Orc Troll Shadow Runners may apply plus one to a single die roll. This does not force a discard of the Shadow Runner. This can be used in any combination with any other Shadow Run abilities. So if we have some Orcs or Trolls, which we do, we can add a plus one modifier to a single die roll. So the only difference in setup would be for multiplayers is we would have a mega corporation we would be part of. So we will start. We have 12 rounds to get 20 million. Turn one. We'll flip over an encounter. We've got some Drake muscle. See, we need a total of five owner dice. It's a pair of critter. Must be defeated twice with the same roll of the dice. And if successful, we'll get an additional two money. So typically each encounter is going to get us one money for a first run. If we go through a second run, we'll get more money and so forth. So this will be worth three million if we succeed here. So we will take our six basic dice. The other two dice will be bonus dice that some cards might give us an ability for. And we're looking to get five at least twice. So we have a five once, and then we can use a two and a three to complete that encounter. So now we have three dice left. We can risk it or we can stay here with just the three money we could possibly get. We'll go ahead and risk it and try another encounter. So for this one, we have a symbol that's gonna change the district at the end of our run, and we need a three on this. So we'll take our three remaining dice. Got a three, so we will succeed there. We can keep going, but I'm probably gonna stop. Take that back, not probably, I'm gonna stop. Now the way you go into a second run is if we flipped over another encounter, we we'll used all our dice. If we used all our dice, then we can get all our dice pulled back and start a second column. But since we're gonna quit, each one of these is worth the money. And with this symbol, that one was worth an additional two. So we've got four new yen from round one. We'll go ahead and clear our dice and pitch these away and move on to round two. And we will also change our district. So basically when districts change, you just take the top one, put it to the back and go to the next one. So now for this one, all human shadow runners retain for one million instead of three, regardless of how many times retained. And if using the optional retaining rules, the one million is placed on the shadow runner. And I'm not using that rule. So we will flip our next encounter, getting a wider depth, and this will also change the district at the end of the turn, and we need a four for this one. Just to show you how you can get additional shadow runners, you can have a maximum of five, but any time you have at least two money, you can flip over another one. And if it's two, you have to purchase it. If it's more, you have the option of it. So we've got James Picard here, which is a dwarf, all rolled fours are wild. Mega Corporation may reroll one unlike die, and we are not using that. So we will spend two money to add another runner to our team. And then we will roll our dice, looking to get a four. So we'll take this four, lock it down, and flip our next encounter. Elf Bladesman, we need a two. And another flip, so we'll be going through two cards at the end of our round here. Pick all these up and re-roll. Getting a two, put that in play, and we'll keep on going. 
Spirit of Air needing an eight. This symbol means we cannot use our shadow runners to assist in this, but it is gonna get us an extra two money. So needing an eight. So our run has ended. So we will not succeed at this run. In a multiplayer game, one of the options is they can take pick up where we left off. So we'd remove this. The next player could jump in where we've gone. But in a single player, all these cards will just go away. Basically, we've just lost a turn. And we are going to flip two district cards. So one and two. So now we're in Dante's Inferno. All shadow runners cost plus one to hire. Going to turn three. Needing 18 more money. Finding Merlin's Ganger. No special rules in play, just need an eight. So we've got a couple ways we can do this. We'll just use two dice and lock that in and go on to the next one. Lone Star needing another eight. And we don't have what we need showing. So I don't like losing all the time. So we'll go ahead and use his ability. All rolled ones are wild. So we'll go ahead and make this a three. We need three money to retain any runner. We do not have that. So we're gonna lose him as a runner. We'll lock this down and we'll call it a turn and just take our two money. One for each, then go to round four. So discard those and try again. So Halloweeners Lieutenant needing a seven. I'll go ahead and look for another Shadow Runner. All rolled fours are wild. So we'll spend two money for burnout. and make the roll. Take the five and the two, putting in on that, go to the next run, needing another seven. Pick up our dice. Using a seven. Won't risk it, we're already doing poorly. So we'll end our turn there. Going into round five. Starting a new run. Needing a five, and this will flip the district at the end of the round. So many fives. We'll like it with the one. Move on. Ancient's Lieutenant. Needing a six. Grab these two and push her luck one more time. Needing a five for a hacker extraordinaire. We did not get it. So instead, we're going to use James Picard here. All rolled fours are wild. The way we're going to make this, we're going to use these fours and make each one of those a one. So we can make a five that direction. Now we have all our dice allocated, so we can start a second run. So we'll get all our dice back and start another column. For this one, we'll need a nine. We'll take our nine here. So basically what we've got at risk here, we've got one money for each of these, and this gets us two money. I'm gonna risk it one more time. Light Assault Copter, needing a seven to succeed here. We've got a six and a one. Getting our seven. So as far as money, we've got two for that one, two for this one, 
and one for each of those, and we're going to call it quits for this round. So go ahead and turn those in for a five. Turn these in for a five. And drop this one down. Ending our turn, we'll be swapping out two districts because of those symbols there. So Dante's Inferno goes away. We're back to the Orc Underground. So once per run, Orc Trolls may apply a plus one to a single die roll. And we have Burnout, who is an Orc. We'll move to round six. So we're currently looking at 11 money in round six, so we're doing okay, we're right on the average. So we're gonna be moving our district at the, at the end of this round, looking for a six here. We'll use a four and a two. Flip the next encounter, needing a four. Getting a four. And we'll risk one more. Going for a samurai, needing a nine. And since that makes it a little bit more interesting, we're going to go ahead and see if we can get another shadow runner. So all threes will be wild with her. We'll spend three money and get two back. Looking for nine. We got a six and a three. We'll move that over and call it quits. Getting a total of three money. So district will move once. Going to Council Island. All human shadow runners retain for one new Yen only. We have one human in play, and we'll rotate to round seven. Flipping the next encounter, needing a 10. Take the five, oh, that was a four and a one. And flip one more card. We'll get a new district here, and we need a nine for this one. Getting a six and a three. We'll take her two. So we'll turn in three to pick up a five. So we're now at 13. Move the district one. To the Redmond Barons. Unless the active player has both a dwarf and an elf. Shadowrunner active. Player rolls one less die at the start of their turn. Another card makes the Redmond Barons front-facing during the active player turn. We'll immediately lose a die. But if we were to pick up a Dwarf and an Elf, we'd get our die back. So we're going to go to turn eight. We're going to be down a die. And flip up. Hacker Extraordinaire. Needing a five. Got a three and a two down here. Flipping the next encounter, getting an elf decker, needing an eight. Don't worry if you forget your password, I have it, all of them. And we've got a six and a two. Would be nice to be getting some extra money on the side of these, but we're not. So we'll get another two, takes us up to 15. The district did not change. We'll go up to round nine. We do have the option of flipping one of our shadow runners face down so we can ignore the ability. 
but I'd rather have two cards in play that makes cards wild for us. So we will press on, finding a light and assault copter for a seven. And of course the flavor text is always good on all these cards too, to help you get in the theme. So we are looking for a seven here. And we have it. We go to the next encounter, Spirit of Fire. This will be worth an extra three money. And we are unable to use runners to get the 13. So this could be a problem. So here we go, needing three dice to be perfect for us. We got up to seven. So we failed the run. We'll get no money out of this turn. And that cost us a round. So we're on round 10. Three more turns to try to get at least five more money. Starting with our first encounter, needing a 12. This will get us an extra three. And once again, we cannot use Shadow Runner abilities. So we've got to use our five, two threes and a one, four of our five dice. We will stop there because this gets us with the bonus. We're going to get the one that all cards are worth and this has a bonus three. So we'll turn in this one to get a five. And now we are just one away from victory. We'll go up to turn 11. And we just need one success. Another Elf Decker is back. She still has her password and we need an eight. And with a six and a two, we will call it there, get our additional one and we have made our required 20 money. And that is the basics to how you play Encounter Shadow Run. For me, this is a quick filler game for one to eight players. Hope you enjoyed this playthrough. If so, please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.